Have you ever been asked, where are you from? Was it an easy answer for you? I've struggled with that question my whole life. You see, I was born in Florida, in the United States of America, but my family been, has been traveling the world since I was little, where my parents did international aid work around the world as diplomats. Before I began fourth grade, we moved to Egypt, and amongst the pyramids of a civilization thousands of years old lies an even older forest of petrified wood, where many pieces of wood like this one laid, and petrified for millions of years, turning into stone. There was once a forest, when now there is nothing but sand. As kids, we play different games in the desert, and as kids do, we trade for stuff. Maybe you should try it your, with your friend sometime if you haven't already. I traded a friend for this old grenade, buried and lost in the Egyptian desert from a forgotten war. It looks a little petrified, right? The sands of time continue though. And now I've returned to what is considered by, by many the most powerful country in the world, the United States of America. I live in a perfect vacation destination in Southern California, surrounded by people enjoying the beautiful weather. Yet if you travel along this boardwalk, you will see homeless people next to empty, for sale, multi-million dollar homes, perhaps victims of the hard times. I've not seen a doctor in years because I have no insurance and I have worked years as a temporary contractor for no benefits, no vacation time, no sick time. My private education has cost over $200,000, my credit is destroyed, and I am massively in debt. I do not support the longest war in our history, the Afghanistan war, nor the Iraq war, and I thought we had learned our lessons in Vietnam. I'm thinking about leaving this country where I am from and renouncing my citizenship to the United States of America. Before you worry about me though, remember the homeless people I mentioned on the boardwalk. I know there are many people suffering more around the world and my family has seen them up close. At least I have my health, I am not starving, and I have shelter for now. Today we know the earth is round. and the equator divides the earth into two halves. And such division seems to be the world these days, right? Liberals, conservatives, rich, poor, homosexuals, heterosexuals, black, white, this religion, that religion, this tribe, that tribe, the list goes on. Also along the equator lie the Galapagos Islands, home to the Galapagos turtle and a rich source of amazing and diverse wildlife that is one of a kind in the world, made famous by Charles Darwin and his work on natural evolution. What will humanity's legacy be in the future, especially when we are so at odds with each other and nature? As I sit on the edge of this continent, overlooking this vast expanse of Pacific Ocean, I think about how special our Earth is, surrounded by 70% water. We are unique in the universe for thousands of light years around us. There is no planet like ours with water for as far as our technology can see into space, and yet we treat the source of all life that is our oceans like drainage puddles, as you see here.
we had harnessed all the resources and energy invested in, destro in destroying each other and the planet with grenades like this one. What if we had directed that energy in another way? I look forward to a day when, when we can sweep our differences into the past where it is not about where I am from or where you are from. I am hopeful going forward we will be able to come, we will be able to overcome our divisions and people will come together towards the middle to the equator so to speak. Perhaps there we can work towards harnessing the power of the sun and the ocean, come to harmony with nature and explore new worlds as citizens of the earth. All of us from this planet traveling the universe through the darkness and towards new light.